On this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we're going full tech with our LS Cam Swap. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. No doubt by now you've seen that we are back onto Black Chops, which is our LS3 powered E30, but we're looking for more power, aren't we, Martin? We're looking for more power, and to get that, we're gonna cam swap it. Cam swapping is a little bit nerdy, so strap yourselves in. We're gonna go down to Brintec, go visit our mad mate, Tony. He's also known dude. as Walter White. Walter White. <laughs> He looks a bit like, like Howard Stark too. He's an absolute legend. Anyway, come along with us, strap yourselves in. It is getting nerdy. It's getting, it's, it's getting very nerdy. So those of you that are just here for the skids, the skids will be coming. Probably next but episode. But before we get to the skids, get just squeeze the tip, pull it on, dive in. in. It's getting juicy, come people. Along. So you've got your lifter that sits on there, yep. rolls around, your push rod that pushes it up through the head, and then you've got your rocker arm. rocker arm and that's pushing yep. on the top of the that's valve. That's a little pivot point here, the fulcrum in the middle, Yep. the trunnion, and then that's touching the valve tip here. No worries. And there's different way. ratios and things that, that changes because we're gonna, what I want to dive into is some of the numbers because some of the numbers can seem a bit confusing at first. So let's ignore the stock one for a second because you can look up what an LS3 stock cam is. So our cam that we're putting in is from VCM Performance and this is a VCM 883. This is basically a cam that suits a street car, which is what this car is. Also worth keeping in mind that an E30 is quite light, so it's not trying to lug a two, two and a half ton Commodore or truck down the road. So it sort of changes a little bit how our engine behaves. Um, but what we have here is duration cam timing, duration at 50 thou, valve lift, lobe separation on both intake and exhaust side. I understand this is gonna get a little bit deep, but can you explain to me the difference of our stock cam versus what these numbers mean and what that sort of gains us and why you would do it. Right, okay. Well, I know it's, it's getting deep, yeah, but yeah, let's just see what way. happens. Because yeah, yeah. you often hear people say, oh, it's a 282 and 289, talking about the... Yeah, advertised duration. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Those numbers don't mean too much because the numbers that you're actually setting when you're timing a cam or setting it up, uh, the tappet lift at 50 thou on number one cylinder on yep. the inlet Okay. Okay, because that's the reference that most cam cards will give you as yes. the setting point. Okay. And it's usually one of the most accurate. Uh, they'll also give you duration. So duration of the inlet and the exhaust cam uh, load at 50 thou. And that's become an industry standard mm -hmm. since the 50s. Yep. Uh, because what happens is that very early on on the ramp, you'll get they're called quietening ramps at the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. Now they vary and it's very hard to get a consistent accurate reading there. And so it was determined later on that at 50 thou tap it lift, it's consistent, you're on the actual ramp, mm -hmm. and you can determine your actual duration if you uh, compare cam to cam to cam like that. Yep. So this cam versus the standard cam, this VCM cam, has more duration on the inlet and the exhaust. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that uh, you're actually holding the valves open longer, yes. each one. And it also has, most likely, they don't give you the information on this card, but the lobe separation angle will be tighter, it'll be less on this cam as well. Are these kind of specs, you often hear people talking about it, is that the kind of stuff that becomes slowly R&D'd and then becomes your sort of IP and your, to get an edge? I mean, the reason that people were changing these, right, was to make the engines behave differently and ultimately win races and, or drag racing, whatever that's, it was, that's right? right? That's right. So when they're sharing these sort of things, is there any difference with how people grind them or create them? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's gone over decades and decades yeah. of development, and yep. now they've pretty much, um, you know, depending on the engine type and series, um, with with compu computer design and simulation yep. now, um, with spintrons and all these other kinds of simulators mm -hmm. that you can get, um, and with the R and D, as I said before, because there's so many of these engines, yes. and they're such a popular engine. And there's no modified. one cam that fits every engine that works right for every engine and what you want it to do. No, is there? no. Because um, the stock one would be also be about efficiency and emissions too. Correct. And drivability. Correct. Emissions mainly. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and and fuel economy. So yep. they're the two things that they're looking to sell a car because of the fuel economy. That number on the windscreen is what a lot of people are looking for. For they're sure. Looking for that economy. Yep. So that's why they went to the AFM, you know, the displacement demand yes. uh, at GM. That was their, their way of trying to reduce the fuel consumption and go ahead. Got it. And so, so we, in a way, we're borrowing from that by going, okay, maybe we're going to use a bit more fuel, we're going to suck a bit more air in, whatever it is. 
and the result is we can potentially make more power or adjust our power band so that the car is fast. Correct. You're out, you're outside of all the legal emission laws in the states now. If you put this camshaft in your car. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that's another story. Take that's note, our American viewers. <laughs> that's another story. Yeah. But um, so the idea is that this camshaft will give you a few different uh, things that you want a customer wants in a modified engine. Mm -hmm. They'll want in a V8. They'll want a nice lopy idle. They want that fat sound. That chop. Yeah, the chop. They want the, they want the sound, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, sure. Hey, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yep. And the other thing is they want that increased mid and upper RPM performance. Yeah. And this cam, these camshafts, these street performance camshafts, typically they'll all improve on the standard one because yep. it's, it's constrained, as you just explained. Sure. So typically load separation angles on street performance camshafts is 110 degrees between the inlet and the exhaust centre lines. Yes. Uh, now the increased inlet and exhaust duration means that the valves are open a little bit longer mm -hmm. and so at higher RPM you're getting more uh, air in and air out. Got it. Now, that Which is why they say it breathes more up top, that's, right? That's right, yeah. that's right. But the 110 degrees actually, what it means is there's a little bit of overlap mm -hmm. now between inlet and exhaust uh, cycles. Yes, so they're both open at the same time. That's right, and so that's why at low RPM you're losing vacuum. Okay. Uh, but you're also getting that rough uh, idle characteristic at, at the same time. But there's a balance. Because it's a street performance cam, you don't want it to be uh, undrivable yes. uh, off idle. And so that's why most performance street cams uh, in, in V8s are 110 degree separations. You can get a, a bigger, right. supercharged, turbocharged applications. Yep. They need a, a bigger, bigger uh, separation mm -hmm. because you don't want the overlap. Mm -hmm. You don't want too much Shuts overlap like there. Shuts stuff some yep. boost yep. in there. That's right, that's right. More for that. So this camshaft is interesting. Um, it's the it, duration at 50 thou uh, lift is 228 degrees on the intake and 238 on the exhaust. Mm -hmm. There's a few other bit of supporting mods that we're going to install. So we're going to slide, obviously you slide your cam back in, but it's yep. not just about well, the cam, it's just the some standard, other stuff. Yeah, the standard LS3 cam is a single bolt retainer for the timing sprocket, the chamber sprocket. Like Just that. about all aftermarket camshafts are based on the on the Gen 3 design, which use three bolts to mm -hmm. secure So we the have sprocket. to get new bits of this as well. That's right. So, a new so it's worth new... mentioning, so this is a, like a kit basically, so yep. VCM have supplied a kit, um, some of their bits, and we bought some other bits to match with it. And so not, along with the cam, you get all the other stuff that makes it bolt into an LS3. Yeah, it's all matching components, so now yep. you've got the three bolt kit. Even give you the three, you know, the three bolts come in the kit yeah, as well, cool. so you've got everything in the kit to, to complete, complete the, uh, the job. This is one of the benefits of getting an LS engine, is there's just like a massive, massive aftermarket of stuff to do every single kind of application you want. You've got an E30 that doesn't weigh much that you want an LS and you want to cam it, well, there you go, there's something, that, there's something that'll work. Yep. Um, so the related components, we're going to put a cam in. What else are we putting in that's new? Uh, we're putting new lifters in. Yep. Uh, new lifter trays. Yep. So out of what? A, so new yep. pushrods too. Uh, new pushrods. So anything well. we're keeping is that. Yeah. The rocker. The rocker in this case is, is staying standard. Yep. There are lots. Well, there's a few different upgrades yeah. available for standard uh, LS rockers. We are slowly going to slap this back together. So our heads are going to go away to be serviced. Decked, just checked basically as well, since we've got it apart and it's out of the engine, out of the uh, car. And new spring, well. we've, got, we've got springs to suit the cam because the standard springs won't suit. Won't hold it. Well, hold we've, it got down. Too much, we've got too much valve lift, we'll get coil bind because, yep. uh, and so we've got a new spring new to fit to that as well. Uh, so, yes, the heads, heads are going to go away, get decked, get machined. Uh, we're going to put together what we can just with the block that's here, and then we're going to come back once the heads are machined and we're going to do all the final assembly yep. with Tony. Absolute legend. Good, good. Thanks, Tony. Um, mm -hmm. I could listen to you talk about that all day, and if there was infinite hard drive space and infinite <laughs> time for everyone, that's what we'd do. So any new parts, whether they're, they're, they look nice and clean and they're preserved like this out of yep. the package, don't trust it as being clean. Right, because there could be a tiny bit of rubbish always, in there somewhere. Always wash it, because any kind of uh, uh, you know lubricant or preservative will attract dust and dirt. Right, okay, yeah. So always wash before you put in the engine, whether it looks clean or not. Yeah. And are these made from... Just, uh, are these like CNC machines? Yeah, made? yeah, yeah. Th so these are a, a steel, um, you know, a, a billet. Sort a billet. Of, sort of a, well, a casting or a billet. I don't yeah, know whether it's a billet it or not. But that's the idea now with cam grinding. Uh, CNC cam grinding control gives you super critical uh, control yeah. on, uh, on, on the load profile. In the old days, it was done using a master. So yes. there'd be a master lobe and yeah. then the grinding wheel follows that. Like, like and, chopping a key at the hardware shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a bit of error involved there. For sure. Normally that won't show up in, in ordinary road cars, but it, it, when it is super critical in race applications. At high RPM, mm. you'll see the difference between uniform uh, low, yeah. lobe, lobe grinding yep. and uh, not so uniform. Because potentially you're starving one of your cylinders of yep. the same Some will be working harder than the others, lift. yeah. Some of the timing will be different to other cylinders, you know yes. what I mean? There's no, it's not completely consistent. Yeah, so we're applying, funnily enough, we're applying 
all that modern technology of CNC crafting one of these with a CNC to an engine design that's 50, 60, well, how many yeah. years yeah, old yeah, is it? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, if you want to go back as oh. far as small locks and oh, big Oh, well, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah, that's how it is. You can go back further if you want to side valves. <laughs> no one talks about side valve engines anymore, do they? <laughs> now that we've got that standard cam out, we check the condition of the cam bearings to make sure that there's nothing you know, majorly. Mm -hmm. This is where if you'd scratch it up on the way out. That, that's right, because this is the actual loaded uh, uh, side of the, of the bearing. You can yep. see the oil feed, because the cam's spinning clockwise mm -hmm. from the front here. The oil feed's just above where the wedge is starting to form. So right. the oil wedge, wedge under the... So that's an ideal location yep. as well. So then they're thinking basically how are we going to improve this design yeah, yeah, yeah. put the oil feed in the right place so mm -hmm. that we're getting a nice wedge of oil under there. Um, these Gen 4s have a nice wide cam bearing in them mm -hmm. to take the load. And we're just going to look, you know, obviously you can't... If you had a boroscope, that'd be ideal. <laughs> but visually, you can see that there's nothing really majorly wrong there. And this engine was in good running it's condition. It's reasonably yeah, new, that's too. Right. Yeah. So there's no need to do anything here with these uh, with these bearings. They're, they're in they're in good condition. They're Amazing. And so the, we moved we moved the lifters and all that sort of stuff. So cam that is the next step. Literally just new one in. Yeah, we're going to lube up the. We're going to clean, clean that. It. Clean the cam. Lube, lube it up and, yep. and slide it back in. Okay, and then yep. put our cap and then the timing chain all that sort of stuff back. Yeah, we're going to do all that and then we'll put our tappets in the tappet trays yep. and proceed back to there. But that timing part of it, uh, we got to. Well, we have to remove. Oh, because you have to time it up too. Yeah, that's of right. Course, right. But before yep. we do that, we have to remove the original uh, sprocket and mm -hmm. oil pump drive. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's part of the timing kit that comes oh, okay. from BCM. Cool. Because it's a two-piece set. We've got an adjustable timing set. Oh, awesome. So if we need to adjust for advance or retard, <laughs> yeah. we've got the capability yep. with that set. Yep. And it's two-piece set. The oil pump drive and the sprocket are separate. Because it's the relation between the cam and the crank. Correct. Just like if at the top you've still got the relation on a belt. Yep, you know that's I mean? right. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Good. Okay, cool. Now, just the idea is, you know, you're balancing it. Yep. And obviously, when you're coming to the, to the bearing journals, it'll be supported and it'll rotate smoothly. Yes. But in between each stage, like that, in between each stage, that's when you're going to have moves. to be, take the care. Okay. So, that's right. so if you're right-handed, I'd stand here where I am, I'm and gonna, I'd feed it like that. I'm going to go like this. Are you going to go like that? Yeah. Right. So you're sort of aiming for the, the journals, right? Yeah, just, you just have to visualise that it's a constant hole, yes. and you just got to keep it feeding straight. Yep. Almost like you want to level on it or something, eh? So you can, you know, you're yeah. Going move the move the front down if you're in doubt, and you'll always, and then and then the other way, and you'll find it. Uh huh. So the bit, yeah, that's the bit you're holding, sort of lower it, lower this it down. Bit? That's it. Now now try and feed it forward, and as you rotate. Ah, oh, there it goes. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, cool. Does it get easier or harder as you do more of them? Oh no, it's 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 you're going you're going okay. Oh, now with this last bit, what you can do is you can. You can put that in there as a, as a, go and as, as a lift, if you like, and yep. you can just use that to lift with. Oh, Perfect. Yes. There you go. It's in. <laughs> Camd LS3. Just like that. It was really easy. Except it wasn't. That's mad. Thank you, sir. Our kit comes with an adjustable timing sprocket that sits on the crank, so we need to remove the factory one. We're using a piece of steel bar to lock the rotating assembly and then a puller to remove the timing chain drive off the front of the crank. We can then install a new one which has an adjustable sprocket and a snout that it mates to. Two piece snout. I'm calling it a snout just because I like the word. <laughs> but basically that's the stock one and this is our aftermarket one. And the aftermarket one's covered in numbers. And what do they do? Right on. So when we're dialing in the cam, they gave us some numbers on that card. Yep. And so we're going to use one of those numbers as our as our setting point. We're going to use that uh, that tap it lift inlet tap it lift mm -hmm. at fifty uh, at fifty thou lift. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, at top dead center. Yes. So at top dead center, number one cylinder, we're looking for this number here. Uh, see, it says lift at top dead center. Yes. It's sixty one thousandths of an inch. Yep. So we're going to measure the tap it. Uh, at top dead center, number one cylinder. Yep. So there's a couple of things to do. Uh, first, we're going to set it at zero, Yes. Uh, the sprocket, uh, and see where we are. And then we're going to find out where we are. We're going to measure it. And we have to determine top dead, absolute top dead center. Yes. That's another process. And we're going to do that on our, using a piston? Yep. Cool. Yep. There's a couple of different ways to do it. That's one of them. Um, so I'll show you the way that we can do with our, with our Piston oh, yeah. bridge, yep. with this little bridge. I'll show you the way that we use it with that. There's another way to use it with an absolute stop. Yes. So you can use a stop either side and, yep. and do it that way, but yep. uh, we'll do it with this style gate cool. bridge. Yep. And that's our basically our adjustable cam timing is. This is that's it. That is yeah. that is the adjustment there. Right. With this sprocket, this sprocket has 
a total possibility to advance and retard eight degrees either side of zero. So we've got 16 degrees of variation there. You know. Does this feel real? I mean, does this feel old school compared to a modern engine where it's got adjustable cam on everything? Well, that's, you, I mean, yeah, like... that's infinite. You see, you've yeah. got an infinite adjustment, but with, yeah. the, with this technology, with this design, yeah. you're sort of limited to this. But this is adequate. This is okay. Oh, for sure. It's just interesting that it's the same thing, but it's so yeah. mechanical and yeah, yeah. others are so yeah. electronic in terms of how you do it. It's just a different world for me. Yeah, yeah. So we start at zero, put it yep. together yep. and measure see, it all See where we are. Yep. Okay. Unlike some newer or more obscure engine designs, there is so much established knowledge out there about LS engines like this one. Small improvements can be made in almost everything that you do, particularly when it comes to oil distribution and preventing wear. So you can see this is where this is where the old the old gear was running, oh, you can running see on the there. surface there. Yeah. You can see how it's just scuffed it. Mm -hmm. There's really negligible wear. You, can, you can't yeah. you can't really feel can't it. Can't get your nail. Nail in there. No, it's, no. it's pretty it's pretty pretty mild, and there's nothing on the back, so it's just been thrusting a little bit on the front. So with lubrication of this, this bearing, because oil is, is flowing out and squeezing around here, mm -hmm. uh, what we do now is, and I saw this uh, in a, one, of the, one of these timing kits had a, a red sheet in there and instructed it, put a little chamfer on this side, on the outer side there, about a one or two millimetre chamfer, mm. and to act as a little oil well, if you like. Oh, right. Yeah, to help lubricate that bearing. It'll just hold a little bit of oil there all the time. So we do that now. So when we get a new plate, uh, we'll put the chamfer there before we put it on. Awesome. Yeah. A cam swap is absolutely a job you can attempt yourself. To gain every bit of value out of it, do your research to try and find out what small changes you can make while everything is apart. Next, we need to ensure the relationship of the cam and crank is synchronised. Getting this wrong means it just won't tune up right and we now realise this is probably where we went wrong with our Honda Civic. So we're going to use a degree wheel to dial in our cam. A piece of wire is bolted to the block to act as a reference point, and then we use something called maths to ensure we've done it all properly. You can see it a bit clearer now. So there's the key set on the zero. You can see there's minus numbers here, 2468, and there's plus numbers here on this side. So that's for advancing the timing, this is for retarding the timing in this way. Now the corresponding number to the zero is on the tooth itself. In the black there, you can see the zero is sitting up pretty much vertically where it should be. And the cam sprocket has a big dot on it here. So all we have to do now is line this dot up with that vertical number there. So if we were to go, for example, to the minus two, then you'll see that the minus two will be sitting up mm -hmm. vertically. And we just line the dot up with that number. But because we're going for, for the zero now, we're lining up on the zero on there. Then you'll see where the dowel location is at three o'clock. And that's where we've got the cam just roughly, just slightly below three o'clock to make it easier to fit it on. And this is the part where you really need to pay attention to make sure that you have got it in that right position. Well, you, can, you can, not too hard to sort of get it wrong. That's why it's worth checking. You can see how I'm out here, a tooth. Mm -hmm. You can see that's a misalignment. So I'm just gonna put it around one. Now you can see pretty much if I put that on the dowel there, there's the dot, there's the zero, we should be Somewhere near it, right? And visually like, looking at it, it's enough, right? Don't you really tell. measure it? No, there's no, well, you can put it, you could get a little ruler and something straight there yeah. and put across there just to double check. Most of this timing exercise relies on accurately knowing where top dead center is. This is when piston number one is at its highest point. This is measured in hundreds or thousandth of an inch, which is most accurately measured with dial gauges securely bolted to the engine. However, even tiny amounts of play in the various parts that make up this system can affect how accurate the reading is. Rotate the engine over until we come up, uh, and we're going we're to make a reference at a hundred thousandths of an inch before top dead centre, okay. and we're going to read off where we are. Okay. But we're going to put thumb pressure on it as we come up, and then over top dead centre and go down and keep thumb pressure on it. Mm -hmm. That'll eliminate any, any play Movement in, in, in the, the bearings, like the yeah, little end or the big yeah. end yeah. Uh, of the rod. And then we're going to go down until it reads the same, hundred thou down the bore and we're going to take another reading on the degree wheel. Okay. Then we're just going to find out where the pointer was at the top. We're going to split the difference and then make the adjustment. Maths. Yeah. We're using maths. Yeah. It's, it's, that, it's going to be that simple. <laughs> so we'll go around until we come up. When, am I, when am I thumbing? You're thumbing it or yeah, am you can I? See, you can see at top dead centre we're reading two hundredths. Yep. Two hundred, two, two tenths of, a, of an inch down the bore. Mm -hmm. So when, we, when we're reading three tenths, sorry, when we're reading one tenth down, is when we want to take our, our degree reading. So 
So when you put your thumb on it, will be when we come up towards top dead center. Yeah. Even on this stroke's okay. Yeah, do yeah, no, yeah you can do it, do it now and keep it constantly cool. on there. That's Get thumb. You hold it. Yeah. Looks so like I'm reading it's set in more. Yeah, I'm reading nine degrees before top dead center. Okay. And then we're going to go up and over and do the same. Oh, I see. We've zenithed out. So that's the same position. And now I'm reading 20, 25 degrees after. So we're, we have to make an adjustment. We do? Yes, we are. <laughs> We were 25 after and, and 9 before. So you think we're out on the... Well, we've got 34 in total. Yeah. So we need to be uh, somewhere in the middle. So is it really good that we just check this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, OK, yeah. good. While engines may all look different, if they have cams and a crankshaft, then this theory is more or less the same. It's just how you align it or adjust it that changes. Learning the basic principles of a four-stroke engine goes a long way towards lifting that fog. There is an engine that I came across once where this didn't work. A rotary. No, no, a reciprocating <laughs> piston engine. Yeah. And it didn't work. It took me a while to work it out. Well, I, I don't know. Are you going to tell me? But yeah, I mean, I'll tell you. No, no, bad. it's pretty. No, it's, it's bizarre. Yeah. This works because the geometry is simple. The centre of the cylinder is in lot on with the centre of the crankshaft. Yes. So as the conrod comes up this side, it's the same height for the same position yep. down the bore. And Are it's you talking the same about a, a diesel with lamb chops in it? Yeah, it was a diesel with lamb chops. I've got anyway, a motor with lamb chops in anyway, it. My this, Supergrams engine has lamb chops in it. Okay, well this diesel, the design of it, the centre line of the crankshaft wasn't at the intersection of the V. Yep. It was above it. Okay. And so what that meant was for the same it degree goes. in rotation, there were different piston heights in the yeah, bore. Because it doesn't. Because, it, because it's not ge geometrically symmet symmetrical as yeah. it goes around. I'm trying to work out why, why don't I have the same same height in the cylinder uh, before and after top dead center. To fit the bore and stroke of the pistons in my six cylinder in my Liberty, the crank is dropped and then lamb chop rods. Ah, right, eh? So, oh. lamb that's, chop that's, rods. That's bizarre, yeah. Be careful yeah, of those lamb chops. That's, that's bizarre. No, but this one, the center line wasn't, wasn't at the intersecting point. Are you happy with this now? That's good. We're at zero. We're at zero. So we'll set up our, for our measure our, our lift it on our tappet. The next specialty tool we're using is a lifter dummy tool with an extension that allows us to measure the movement created by the cam lobes as they're moving around. Many engine builders have a toolbox full of purchased and homemade tools to help make these kind of processes easy. But it really does show you just how long piston engines have dominated. There's not a laptop or battery pack in sight. You've got to do it all by hand and by feel. We're rotating the crank and then recording our readings to check the opening and closing points on the cylinder one intake lobe, which should match our cam spec sheet. And yeah. we've ended up with 52, so 53 thousandths of an inch. And that's the number that we're looking for, 61. Oh, okay. So uh, lift at top dead center should be 61. We've got 53 the way it is, so we need a little bit more lift. Okay. So, so which bit's wrong? Oh, uh, look, uh, here's, that's a good question. That's yeah. a really good question. Yeah. So errors in, or let's say tolerances in the position of the key on the crank. Okay. Uh, position of the dowel in the cam, position of the sprocket uh, bolt holes, position right. of, the, of the sprocket, the, you know, the, the, the teeth in relation to the key. But that's the only adjustment we have, is it? Yeah, but that's okay. Okay. This is, that's to compensate for that. That's why they've given us eight degrees before oh, and eight degrees after, to compensate for all of these potential tolerances. Okay. You know? So that's the advantage of it. And that's why it's worthwhile doing. Yeah, for sure. Because if you don't do it and put it in blind, well... Do we, we need to change ours? Yes, we're going we're gonna to change it. Do we know which way we're going to change yeah, it? Yeah, we're going to advance it because we need more intake lift yep. uh, at this crank position. So we need more lift, so we're going to advance the... Put the on this, shaft. Put on to two degrees. The, now, the next step up? Okay, here's, here's a, a rule of thumb uh, with how far to go yep. gives you how much lift. Yeah. Uh, so for every... For every cam degree, which is two crank degrees, because the cam's only spinning yes. at half the speed, half the speed yeah. you get about roughly four thousandths of an inch increase or decrease in your, in your lift. So we've got 53 and we need, what did I say we need? 60, 64. 63, 61. We need 61. 61. So we've got 53, so it's seven, eight. So let's go four degrees. To adjust, we need to remove the timing chain and sprockets, reposition the adjustable crank wheel, and then reassemble. By taking the time to dial in our cam, checking and rechecking the movement of the cam in relation to the crank, we've worked out that we do need to advance the timing using our adjustable snout. 
Using a combination of instructions and some of Tony's wealth of experience, we can be sure that we aren't losing any potential power gains through incorrect timing. Once we've reassembled all the timing gear, we go through and recheck our readings once again to make sure it's perfectly in the right spot. So thanks to the incredible knowledge and experience of Tony, we have managed to strip the engine down and the cam is now in and I do believe, Martin, it's also now triangulated. Yep, so we got given uh, a guide of where we should be seeing our lobe separation and our lift and all a whole bunch of nerdy engine buildery type stuff, but it wants lift at top seb center of 0.61 degrees and we're at 0.63. We are within spec and that's what matters the most. You wanna be within spec so that everything works out and times up as it's supposed to and you make power where you're supposed to. Also, things are gonna change over time as well in terms of there might be some chain stretchage. Mm. Um, things can move, th things can wear out. So we're kind of aligned on the side of as things wear out, they're gonna get more into alignment as opposed to less. <laughs> Not all LS3s are made the same. They are, but the tiniest difference in a machining point or the machining of the cam can all make a difference, which is why we had this adjustability. So it's been adjusted thanks to the uh, very wise uh, knowledge of Tony. And now... Mutton heads, so the heads are getting sent the off The heads now. are getting sent away so that they can be decked and just checked over and serviced. And then we have a whole bunch of parts that need to go back into that, but we can't do that yet. So we've done as much, we've gone as far as we can get with our block. We're going to get back to the car. So that has some substantial rust repairs, which is part of the reason why this was pulled out in the first place. Uh, and that was due to a leaky brake booster. Yep. Was it brake booster? Brake master cylinder. Uh, master cylinder, we've just dribbling stuff down off over, the front of the booster, yeah, over exactly. decades yep. and decades. So we're going to move on to doing that while the heads are away, then this can go back together, that can be fixed, everything can be back in, and then we're going to have the car that we always wanted, ready to do some mad skids with extra power. Thanks everybody. <laughs>